Hello and welcome to another episode in the gutter. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most discussed questions in Greek history. What drugs was the Oracle of Delphi using? The Oracle of Delphi was one of the most famous figures in Greek history, and over the hundreds of years she operated as the Oracle for Apollo, many accounts were written about her. Although these accounts vary quite a bit, we can still average out a general image of what she would look like on a consultation day. She would have a laurel leaf in one hand and a ball in the other. She would be sitting on a tripod above a crack in the earth that was leaking gas. Next to her would rest the omphalos, an item which the Delphic Greeks considered the centre of the world. And upon your approach, she would duck down and take a drink from the Cassida Spring, which ran underneath the temple. So she's got a lot going on. As well as this, the accounts vary quite a bit on what aspect of this actually inspired the oracle, and what being inspired would do to her. Our first idea is the most immediately obvious, the chasm beneath the oracle leaking gases. The chasm is mentioned many times in our texts, and in fact they make out like the temple was built there because of the chasm. Diodorus Siclus even writes that the chasm was originally discovered by a shepherd whose goats kept on getting high while grazing on the grass around it. An attempt to find this chasm was actually the inspiration for the first archaeological dig at Delphi, which took place in the 19th century. Unfortunately, the French team that conducted the excavations found precisely zero fault lines, and it was the death of the thesis for a long time. However, more recently, a team of scientists conducted a series of geological tests on the site, and found two overlapping fault lines directly beneath the temple. The team hypothesized that the two fault lines could have leaked subterranean gases up to the surface, specifically a gas called ethylene, which was used as knockout juice in the 20th century, and has a range of symptoms that coincide with our literary texts, including amnesia and rapid onset. Further inspection of the site actually found micro leakages of subterranean gases across the site, as well as actual ethylene in one of the streams connected to it. Despite this, the theory has been criticised, as the amount of ethylene found was barely enough to register, and the whole thing relies on the assumption that back in the day these subterranean gases would have had a 20% ethylene concentration, which is a lot, but frankly two fault lines is a lot as well. So ethylene, maybe. But that's not the only possibility for gaseous inspiration. An article by Professor Leicester Holland was the first to identify a few anomalies in the temple floor, specifically a lot of circular holes. These were originally thought to have been made by medieval peasants, trying to dig up all the old metals from the site. But Holland suggested that they were actually there to pipe up smoke from an underground chamber, specifically cannabis smoke. Holland also noticed that these holes were about the same width as one in the top of the Umphalos that thing next to the oracle that was the centre of the world. The overall idea being the oracle would run downstairs, light up a pile of the good stuff, come back upstairs, sit next to the Omphalos and get suitably inspired. You might be questioning how on earth the Greeks would get their hands on some weed, but it's actually well attested to in the literature as being immensely popular among the northern steppe peoples. Not only this, but by the beginning of the classical period, weed was beginning to enter the Greek world itself and as we cross over into the ADs, it's well established, its leaves being used for bandages and clothing, and its seeds infused into wine to cure headaches. Next up, we're going to be looking at an interpretation that has maintained a lot of popularity over the years, that the oracle was eating laurel leaves. Now, originally this idea was debunked pretty quickly by a man named Professor Osterroik, after he ate some laurel leaves to test the idea's validity, and reported himself to be quote, no more inspired than usual. But like the gas theory, this idea has recently received some new life. It is suggested that the oracle is actually chewing on a similar plant called oleander that has side effects of agitation and excitement. So much so that Greek and Roman MMA fighters used to chew it before their bouts for an extra bit of pep. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a sad one as it does just entail the oracle undergoing repeated poisonings, but it was widely accessible, fairly popular, and the side effects, including respiratory distress, do certainly match up with some of our accounts. Finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't include this one for all you Graham Hancock fans, ergot. For those of you who don't know, ergot was originally theorised to have been the active component in the infamous Eleusian Mysteries way back in the 1960s by Gordon Wason, Carl Rook and Albert Hoffman. Ergot itself is a fungus that grows on barley. While normally toxic, its psychedelic properties can be extracted and made into a potion. This brew, when drunk, would be very similar to the effects of hallucinogenics like LSD, magic mushrooms, and DMT. I'm not going to get too hardcore into it here, but it's very likely that the Eleusian Mysteries directly entailed making and drinking such a potion, although it's still very hotly debated. So how does this relate to our oracle? 
Well, remember that bowl she was holding at the start of the video? This would have it that it was actually an ergot potion. Or perhaps the Cassidus spring, which she took a ceremonial drink from, was actually an ergot potion itself. The effects of such a brew certainly more than line up with the esoteric ways that the oracle was depicted, and she was known to make dedications with barley, so it was definitely on hand. There are, however, a few major problems with this. First of all, practicing the Elysian Mysteries outside of Eleusis was punishable by death, which tells us not only how important this stuff was, but also that everybody knew what it was. For instance, when Demetrius the Besieger was caught practicing the mysteries inside Athens, in the Parthenon, with a bunch of prostitutes, the outrage was that he was doing so outside of Eleusis more than anything else, and everybody immediately knew what he was up to. Therefore, it's not only odd that the Oracle would be allowed to practice this outside of Eleusis, but also that nobody records her doing so. So like all of these, you'll have to make up your own mind. That's all we've got time for today, but this is by no means a definitive list. The Oracle of Delphi has received a million interpretations as to what she was up to. Some people think she was using opium, which was very popular at the time. Some people think she was burning hensbane, which was very similar to oleander. Some people think that the Oracle was chosen because she had inherent psychological differences. And some people think that the Oracle's advice was a sham and was actually dictated by a cabal of rich and powerful priests. To me, the biggest thing we can take away from all of this is that to the Greeks, the main point of discussion wasn't her source of inspiration as it is today. It was that this lady could talk directly to a god. So when your mum asks why your eyes are so red, tell her that you've been talking to Apollo.